you to go see Tori. It was scratches, and we have a, a record. They used to have records that have a scratch on it. We didn't have those things. A musical record. They had a scratch. A little scratch. The scratch that would, huh? What? A little, if you, they used to have these records. You'd buy a record in the store. It would be a little plastic, whatever it was made of. And sometimes if you weren't careful, like you could get a scratch on the record. When you got a scratch on the record, what would happen? It would, it would go around and it would jump back to the first one. Right? So it would, it would jump back to the first one. So you read, Mary has a little lamb, the Mary has a little lamb, little lamb, Mary has a little lamb. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. No, no, they scratch to make the sound with the scratches. Yeah. Right, they make the scratches. But here you had a little scratch and you'd go crazy. You listen to a mute, a song that would be really, really good. In fact, you really wanted to hear the song. Come over, come right. It drives you crazy. Well, there's people that also have scratches in their personality. That what they're going as, and all of a sudden somebody says something and they <coughs> jump back to who they were when they were like three years old. Something like that. <coughs> That's where they start all. They get all angry. They get all depressed. They get all this. They get all nervous. They get all crazy. So that's what Svirata Omer is. Svirata Omer is to help us take away our Yitzhak scratches. So that we can actually serve Hashem in a proper, normal way. So we can be normal people. Right? Instead of uh, having all these crazy hang-ups. Because the jails are filled with all these people. <coughs> okay. Ufa Frat and especially Behemshech. After after we say Spirit of Omer, Omrim we say Aleinu. Aleinu Mishabach Lagona call. Ad until La Siom. What do we say in Aleinu? Did, by the way, have you ever read the words of Aleinu? Torah, you ever look at the words of Aleinu? They used to forbid, the Goyim used to forbid Jews to say Aleinu. They, they, had, they had made them take it out of the out of the Siddur. Look what it says in Aleinu. It's exactly how I started this class. What is wrong? What is what the Jews really believe in? And if you believe in that, then all the other religions are out the window. Right? And that's what the Catholics and Muslims and Protestants, they were totally against this. What does it say? That every knee will bend only to you, God. And all the idol worshippers will be finished. Right? And all flesh, even the evil people will all turn to you. Right? And all the other the, those who worship the other things will be cut off. And the other Jews are saying this three times a day, every day. So is it part of the <laughs> All the other the Goyim are bowing down to hevel, to emptiness, and weak, and, and uh, nothingness. But the word reek also comes from the word rof. Yeah, that's what it says. Right. I have my theory. You, you, you know, when we spit, we say, you know, some people have a lurik. Oh, well, there's... It says in the Taz, in the Shulchan Aruch, that when you say Aleinu, and when you say that all the Goyim, they are bowing down the hevel, the lurik, to emptiness and to folly, so you should spit. <laughs> Did you see that? In Chabad we spit. You come, you spit a little bit, a little bit. You don't have to like a big, uh, <laughs> you spit a little bit. So why do you spit? Because you don't want to get any pleasure from that word, from the, the emptiness of the Goyim. And that's the word reek means emptiness, so you spit. Now I have a theory why you spit. Uh, you don't get mad after the uh, Mishnah, right? A little bit. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's not, it's not our custom to do it, but you can do it if you want to. Okay, I have this theory why, they, why we say, why we spit. And reek means also spit, right? So there's a famous uh, experiment which was done by what is he, Ivan or something. Like that. He's also Pavlov in Russia. Pavlov's dog. You ever hear this? Very famous uh, experiment. What did he do? He took dogs and he put food in front of them, and he had a way of measuring the saliva that came from their mouth. When the dogs saw food, so they would salivate. The, the mouth would get it. That's what happens to a person. A person wants to eat, he's ready to eat. It starts salivating. So it's, it's anticipating what's going to happen before it actually happens. So then, when he 
saw that dogs salivate every time they got food, so then he rang a little bell. He was eating his food, and he would ring a little bell every time. The bell had nothing to do with anything. So he would put the food, and he would ring a bell when he took the food, and it would salivate because of the food. But then what he did was he took away the food, and he rang the bell. And whenever he would ring the bell, the dogs would salivate. So whenever he did a salivating, the, the, the spit would come for nothing. It was for nothing. It was just ringing the bell. So it's the same thing with the goy. The goyim, they get excited about nothing. But, but they get excited because they spit. It comes from their mouth and they spit. To show that the, the non-Jews are excited about absolutely nothing. Leek means nothing. Just like the dogs were excited about nothing. Right? The dogs got excited about nothing. They saw the spit came in their mouth. But the non-Jews, they get excited about absolutely nothing. Tremendously excited. They're going to have big festivals with pigs with, with billions of dollars of pigs. The people are going to go to hell with burning in heaven with their eggs, right? So they're all they're excited and they're excited. But the whole thing is just empty and it's, and it's it spits. It's just to remind you that yes, it's true they are excited. It's true they're excited. But the dogs also got excited and there was nothing there. There was no food. But there's nothing really to get excited about. Okay. Anyway, that's the idea of in Spirit of Omer, we say Alinu Lusabeach. Until we finish, we say, V'haya Hashem Lamelech, that God will be the king. I'll call the on the whole world. Vayom Ahu, in that day, Yehiyah will be. Hashem Echad, God will be one. Ushemo Echad. And his name will be one. That's how we finish Alinu, right? What does it mean God's name will be one? What is God's name? Who knows in this ruler world, room, what is God's name? God is one and his name is one. What does that mean? So we won't call him God anymore, we'll call him one. What does it mean God's name is one? So the world is God's name. God created the world from his name. So the, when it says that God will be one and his name will be one, it means that we'll be able to see God in his name, in other words, in the world. The whole world are just the names of God. So God, on that day, by Yom Ahu, by Yom Yiyashem Echad, Oshemoy, Oshemoy. Oh, Shemoy, oh, Shemoy, that's how they say it. Bob, they don't say it, but that's how they synagogue say it. Oh, Shemoy, God's name will be one with what? God's name will be one with him. That means we'll see in the world God's oneness. It's very amazing. That's what we say every day, three times a day, and a later. That's a look at the word. Beautiful psalm, poem, beautiful uh, prayer. The Indian, that's the Mashiach. Aleinu talks about Mashiach. Who's going to be a Mashiach? The Indian, the, the Indian, this whole idea of Ahoyah Hashem, that God will be a Melech, the king. I'll call the Oretz on the whole earth. Shayek, this is very relevant to spirit. Malchus, to the aspect of God's Malchus, the lowest of the ten spirits. Ubafran, especially Malchus, last page. Especially Malchus. Oh, yeah, here it is. Pass it around. Pass it to your friend. Here, two more. Especially Malchus Sheba Malchus. Malchus Sheba Malchus is the lowest of the of the spirits, which means this physical world. That's what Malchus is. Well, after we get after that, Omer we say, quote, Ach Tzadikim Yodu Fanecha, Heshbu Yeshorim Es Fanecha. We say that the Tzadikim will, get, uh, how do you say, will uh, realize your name and. The, the, how do you say, the, the, um, what's the Yishorim, Yishorim are the, 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 the honest people will, like, bask in your face. How do we translate? Do you have it in English somewhere? How do we translate it? Um, it says, indeed, the righteous will extol your name. Ah, it's right. The righteous people will to thank your name. And the Yeshurim told the upright, Yeshurim, the honest people, the right, will dwell in your pre presence. What does that mean? That all the Jewish people are called tzaddikim. Everyone will see God. Makal ze al din. Rizu, we announce the Tzibor in a group of ten Jews that everybody's speaking in front of all these proceedings. The Makom in a place, Shemagadlim Bo Torah, that we grow in the Torah, 
and the godly both the fila and we grow in it there. Hari behold, because we say all these things in Alenu that are only going to be in the time of the future redemption, that the whole world will be filled with the knowledge of God, and that every God's name will be one, and he will be one, Hare certainly, Bavadai certainly, Shemiyad immediately, Tavo will come, Hageula the redemption, Vitehi and there will be, Shlemut the completion, the, how do you say, the, the completeness, the Malchut of kingship, of God's kingship, Malchut Beit David, the kingship of Beit David, Vagam and also Malchuto, the kingship of Moshe, of Moshe. Vekain and also a Baal Shem Tov. And also the Baal Shem Tov. That's the holiday of Shavuot is connected to these three people. And the Rebbe said that that's what it says, the Mashiach will come miyad, immediately. Miyad means immediately. Miyad is Mem Yud Dalit. Moshe. Yud is Yisrael Baal Shem. And Dalit is David. So those are the three. Miyad is Moshe, Yisrael Baal Shem, and David. So the Mashiach should come Miyad immediately. Moshe, that's the holiday of Shavuot. Mashiach will come immediately, and that's what the Rebbe is talking about now. Moshe, Yisrael Baal Shem, and David. And the Rebbe also said after that, but also Mashiach goes on to even also say that Mashiach is, he said in reverse order, Mashiach is Reverse it, Mem Yud Dalit. Dalit is Dover. That's the fifth Rebbe of Chabad. Yud is Yosef Yitzchak, previous Rebbe. And Mem is Mashiach Menachem Shema. That's the Rebbe's name. The Rebbe said that's what Mashiach is. Dover, Yosef Yitzchak, and Mashiach Menachem Shema. Miyad immediately. And also the Baal Shem Tov. The call and the Skin, and all of the leaders Sha'acharav after the Baal Shem Tov. Zaman, Malki, who are the kings? Who are the leaders? Rabbanim, the rabbis, the ones who have the Torah. They're the rulers. The call, they, and all this, the yeah will be mi'ad immediately. Shalo, ikvan, they will not be limited. Afilu, of ayin, not even like a blink of an eye. Excuse me. The blink of an eye. Omitoch and from Simcha Batud Levav, joy and the good heart. Ulamata Miyasar Tafakim, below ten Tafakim, and it'll be below in the physical world. Take it from Miyad Mamish immediately. The world will be a thing we'll have to just read about. We'll be able to see it. The world will be a different world. So, what did the Rebbe say in this Bible? First of all, it started off why does the Ten Commandments, why do the Ten Commandments begin with going out of Egypt? It should have begun with the creation of the world. And the Rebbe explains the question even more deeply. And finally, he says that the reason is because the whole purpose of the Torah is to go out of your limitations. To go out of whatever limitations you have. And going out of limitations means that we have to prepare properly for Ma'an Torah. And the Rebbe talks about the different preparations. Vayichan Yisrael, Na'asev and Nishma, receiving the Torah, the revealed Torah, the inside Torah, gathering all the children to the base to the show to, to, to receive the Torah because the Torah gave stability to the physical world. When the Rebbe starts talking about the physical world and how important the Torah is for the physical, actual physical world right? and there's a, if eventually in this physical world would be revealed Mashiach and that was the work of Moshe David and the Baal Shem Tov that they the, their holiday is uh, the holiday of Shavuos and that by means of our learning and praying and giving charity, Torah, Avodah, the Chassadim, is that will strengthen the whole entire world and bring Mashiach now to fulfill all the things that it says in Aleinu, the Aleinu prayer. Good. Have a good day, everyone. Go over this. Hot stuff. Um, do you have any words?